Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Rose Marie, starring Patrice Monsell, Pinky Lee, and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we bring you the very popular musical play of the Canadian Northwest, Rosemary, with book and lyrics by Ella Harbach and Oscar Hammerstein II, and music by Rudolph Frimmel and Herbert Stothert. In the title role of Rosemary, you will hear the lovely young coloratura of the Metropolitan Opera, Patrice Munzel. The popular comedian, Pinky Lee, appears in the role of hard-boiled Herman, while I play the wandering young prospector, Jim Kenyon. Herman and I are returning to the town of Fond du Lac in Saskatchewan after a few days of prospecting on our nearby claim. God, Jim, can't we go any faster? I, I'm frozen stiffer than ice ago. Well, now, don't worry, Herman. In a few minutes, we'll be in a nice warm cabin, and then you can be a drip again. Now, just a minute, Jim Kenyon. I heard that remark, and I'm no drip. Well, I got more brains in my little finger than I got in my whole head. <laughs> what do you think I am, an ignoramus? Yes. Uh, who told you? <laughs> Look, Herman, there are the lights of Fond du Lac just up ahead. Yeah? Oh, I can't wait to get in and see Rosemary again. And if that South American job comes through, I'm going to ask her to go with me as my wife. Well, won't Brother Emil have something to say about that? You know, he's pretty set on her marrying that rich boss of his, Edward Holly. Brothers don't force their sisters into marriages anymore, Herman. Modern girls have minds of their own. They're not weaklings. You're telling me I tried to kiss one yesterday, and she hit me on the top of the head so hard she bent the point. <laughs> well, sometime before this night's over, I intend to ask Rosemary to marry me. Well, uh, I suppose you got your speech all rehearsed, huh? No. No speech, Herman. Just a song. Oh, sweet Rosemary... It's easy to see why all who learn to know you love you. You're gentle and kind, divinely designed, as graceful as the pines above you. There's an angel's breath beneath your sign. There's a little devil in your eyes. Oh, Rosemary, I love you. I'm always dreaming of you. No matter what I do, I can't forget you. Sometimes I wish that I had never met you And yet if I should lose you T'would mean my very life to me and Of all the queens that ever lived I choose you To rule me my rosemary I 
She heard us all right. Rosemary. Oh, Jean, Jean, you're back. Yeah, but not for long. Uh, Jim and I have an offer to go to South America. South America? Yes, we're waiting for a letter about it any day now. Then both of you will be going away? Oh, no, just Jim. You know, little Herman's going to stay right here in our claim till I make enough money to go into business in Quebec. Now, I want to be rich someday. As I always say, show me a rich man... And I'll show you a man who isn't poor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when can I see you alone, Rosemary? Later, Jim. I must stop here at the post now. Monsieur Hawley has sent for me. He's my brother's boss. I must see what he wants. You want us to go in with you? No, please. I go see Monsieur Hawley alone. When he leaves, I find you. Well, if you need help, just call. I'll help Herman carry in our stuff. I'll meet you inside in a few minutes, Jim. <laughs> Rosemary, you got here at last, huh? Your brother told me to tell you he had to go up to Kootenai Pass on business, and that you were to follow him up there with me later tonight. I think you put my brother up to this. Maybe, but all's fair in love and war. Monsieur Holly, you are very rich and very nice, but it is Jim I love. But, Rosemary, I can give you everything a girl could dream of. What could that wanderer, Kenyon, offer you? Perhaps soon he will offer me what I want most in all the world. Chance to be Mrs. Jim Kenyon. Rubbish. Oh, perhaps someday my brother will like Jim just like I do. When he gets to know him better, like I do. I know that no other man I see like Jim. I know that it's not the fun to be with him. Sometimes he teases me for a while. For you, Monsieur Holly. All right. Come with me into the other room. I'll be back for you later, Rosemary. If you can find me, Monsieur Holly. Have you gone crazy, Wanda? What are you doing here? You know, come see Wanda. Wanda, come see you. And find you make the love to the white girl. For heaven's sake, Wanda, keep your voice down. Your husband may be looking around outside. No. Black Eagle, get ready to go to Hills tonight. No home for two, three days. You come see Wanda. Like before, maybe? Huh? All right, Wanda. I'll come see you later. Wanda! Black Eagle! Well, Wanda, thank you very much for bringing me that message. I, I appreciate it very much. I'll take care of it right now. 
What message you bring that man? Why, I... Black Eagle know me teach no, you. The Black Daddy, Eagle no. kill you. He choked truth out of you. No, no. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Pardon me, my mistake. Wait. No, 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 wait a minute, now, please, Mr. Indian, you know, uh, I don't want to be obstacle or clientele, convalescent or irrecipient in any way, shape, or form, see? But seeing you, is, seeing you too, is synonymous with the fact that you can fool some of the people some of the time, and some of the people some of the time, but you said it. Mm. Go! Well, why don't you say so? Not you! Oh, pardon me. Wanda, get out. She minds well, doesn't she? <laughs> Black Eagle have bone to pick with you. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. <laughs> you steal black gold from Black Eagle's land. No, we, I didn't steal any gold at all from your land. No, we didn't take anything at all. That land doesn't belong to you, no. It belongs to us. It was surveyed. You know, surveyed. S-I-R-C-I-U... C-U-S... They measured it, you see. <laughs> and, you know, you, and to survey, you got to know arithmetic. Ar arithmetic, you know. You take a bunch of numbers, push them together, and it comes out, what is it? Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain the whole thing to you. See, for instance, eight and four is, um... Eight and four is, um... Well, how much is eight and four? Don't rush me. First, I gotta find out how much eight is. <laughs> now, let me see. Now, let, let, me, let me see. Now, you see, this claim has a longitude of 104. You understand longitude? No. Well, that gives me a little more latitude. Then. <laughs> now, when you survey, you see, the first thing you got to remember is never to put a cipher before a digit if you feel a hypotenuse coming up. If you do, you'll wind up with a drooping denominator. So you immediately bisect your rectangle and split your radius. Of course, sometimes your radius is too old to do the split. So you place the entire... You see, you grab a hold of the... You, you sneak the entire... When you place the... You don't know nothing, do you? <laughs> Something wrong, Herman? Oh, oh, hello. No, no, nothing wrong. I can handle laughing cheese by myself over here. You'll give back gold. Now listen to me, Black Eagle. You've kept this up long enough. Look, look, look out, Jimmy's got a knife. Now, just a minute, Kenyon. What's going on here? Well, aren't you a little previous, Sergeant Malone? Since when did the Mounties get their man before he does anything? These Indians cause us enough trouble without you getting one into an argument. Now, wait a minute. There's no argument. This half-breed has a small claim next to ours. There's a certain strip of land he says is his. His mine. You take gold from my land. Let me handle him, Sergeant. I'm tough. Why, where I come from, men are men and women are women. What about it? I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> Black Eagle, I have maps that prove where the boundary is. I'll bring them to your cabin on our way to Kootenai Pass tonight and show you. That's good enough for me, Kenyon. You understand, Black Eagle? Jim will explain at your cabin tonight. Now, let's hear no more about it. Out! Uh, Come on, now, out! Uh, well, okay, Herman, get our sleds packed. No, nah, Jim, no, nah, wait a minute, now, please. I don't want to go away again, please. Don't make me pack those sleds, please. I beg of you on my hands and knees. Please, please. Herman. Wait, there's one more. Please! <laughs> oh, Jim, Jim. We're in here, Rosemary. Graham Herman. Gee, I was hoping we could stay here long enough for me to start a pyramid club. <laughs> Jim, I looked for you ever since I talked with Monsieur Hawley. What did Hawley want with you, Rosemarie? He says my brother wants me to leave for Kootenai Pass tonight with him. Well, that's fine. I have to go to Kootenai Pass myself. Wait there for that letter from South America. Oh, then Rosemarie go too. And the first thing when we get there, I show you a castle which belongs to me. Castle? I didn't know you had a castle. Oh, it's just a big old cabin where nobody lives but me. It's high on a cliff near a big rock they call Lover Stone. There's an old Indian story that if a boy and a girl go there and sing Indian love call together, they are married. You know the call. I always sing it so you know it is me. Oh, that call. Sure, I know that all right. But you've got to learn all of it. Now, pay attention. It goes like this. All right. Thank you, Jim. 
answer to When you think of a railroad, what is the first picture that comes to your mind? Probably it's an image of the passenger trains that we read about and ride on. And that's a mighty important part of the railroad service, too. But even more important are those freight trains that roll day and night, carrying the things America produces to the places where there are people to use them. And you've noticed, no doubt, how those freight trains are made up of cars from many different railroads. And perhaps you've wondered what they're carrying and where they're coming from and where they're going. Well, the next time you see one of these trains, take a seeing look at it. If it should happen to be the average freight train, it would be carrying 1,175 tons of freight, fuel and ores, raw materials and perishables, food and finished products, some of everything that is produced and transported in the United States. And for every hour it is on this road, the average train performs service equal to moving one ton of freight 18,658 miles. Or to put it the other way, moving 18,658 tons, one mile. Either way you look at it, that represents performance at record efficiency. And there's another thing about that average train. If it's pulled by a coal-burning steam locomotive, it uses only a couple of ounces of coal for each ton it moves a mile. Or if the engine burns oil, it takes only a tablespoonful. And if it's pulled by a diesel locomotive, it burns only a teaspoonful of diesel fuel in moving a ton a mile. This efficiency and economy are the results of the constant program of research and improvement which the railroads carry forward year after year. And it is just the sort of efficiency and economy which make it possible for the American railroads to haul freight for the average charge of only about one and one-third cents for moving a ton one mile, the lowest average charge by far of any form of transportation serving all sections of the continent in all seasons of the year. And now, back to Rosemary, starring Patrice Munsell, Pinky Lee, and your host, Gordon McRae. Good evening, Wanda. Is Black Eagle here? Black Eagle no here, Jim Kenyon. He go to here. Oh, I see. Well, I'll leave these maps here for him. They'll prove to him that my partner and I haven't been prospecting on his claim. I tell him. Thanks, Wanda. Good night. Good night. You come out now, Monsieur Rolly. Jim Kenyon gone. That was a close one. I'd better be getting back to the post. We're leaving, leaving for Kootenai Pass in an hour. White girl, Rosemary, go with you? Wanda, I've told you a thousand times, she's only going to see her brother. You still belong to Wanda. Of course, of course. This trip is purely business. Then Wanda give you one last kiss for goodbye. You've got your arms around me. Pull closer, closer. 
Black Eagle. Oh, I catch you with wife. Long time I suspect. Now listen, Black Eagle. Black Eagle, no listen. Black Eagle, kill. Oh, the knife. The knife. Got it. Black Eagle, dead. I, I didn't do it. It was, it was Jim Kenyon. He and Black Eagle quarreled about their claims, and Kenyon stabbed him. You saw it, Wanda. You've got to swear to that. Wanda swear. Wanda protect man she loves. I'll give you all the money you'll need. Go to Calgary and wait for me there. Oh, Wanda, wait. Well, here we are, Herman. This is the Totem Pole Hotel. Gosh, look at all the totem poles. They remind me of my school teachers. That I can't believe. That they remind me of my school teachers? No, that you went to school. Yeah. Of course I went to school. What do you mean? Like all other children, I went to school. I started in the first grade. Years passed, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't laugh now. It was serious. No, now. no, I'm not, I'm not laughing at you, Herman. I'm laughing at uh, those totem poles up there. They have such funny faces. Oh, you shouldn't laugh. You know, these Indians take their totem poles very seriously, you know. You know the story about them, don't you? I know. Tell me about them. Okay, sit down. It shouldn't take more than a verse and two choruses. <laughs> Long ago, there used to be a tribe of Indian smarties throwing their parties here. Long ago, you used to see a wild young maiden in copper dance with her popper dear. In the shadow of the totem pole here, in the shadow of the totem pole. Night long, they skip and prance like bird on wing. They would float them, call it the totem dance. Call it the totem, totem. When old Grandpa Chief Chicky called them, took Grandma out to a totem, totem tom tom. Oh, totem tom tom. First they'd move their feet very blue like the drum would beat as they do like totem tom tom. Totem tom tom. Totem tom tom. Then pretty soon each engine was singing. His throat with fire water gingin and faster and faster round the tone they flew but later on all tired and sleepy they'd go back home to the tv told him tom tom oh told him tom tom all the beat get it day i don't feel it the most day get it the bottom day no i didn't feel it the most day I'm all right now. <laughs> oh, it engine was singing, his throat with fire water gingin, and faster and faster round the totem they flew, but later on, all tired and sleepy, they go home. Home to their DP, Totem Tom Tom. Oh, Totem Tom Tom. I'm getting sleepy too here. Okay, Herman. I'm going across to the post office to see if that letter from South America is here. Scout around, will you, and see if you can find Rosemary for me. See you back here in a few minutes. Okay. Now, how can I find Rosemary? I, I, I don't know where she is. Maybe I just better stay here and let her find me. At least I know where I am. <laughs> well, what do you know? It works. Herman. <laughs> Well, hello, Rosemary. You know, we just got in. Well, what held you up? Well, we took a long cut through the most dangerous territory in Canada. Were you hurt? No, but we had a close call. You know, we came upon one cabin that had a note pin on the door. It said, Beware, Hungry Polar Bear in the Vicinity. Signed, Friendly Eskimo. Yeah, there was another note, too. Well, what did it say? It said, Disregard First Note. Signed, Hungry Polar Bear. <laughs> Well, Herman, I see you've been keeping Rosemary entertained. Oh, Jean. Rosemary, I got my letter from South America. I can have the job I wanted, but I've got to leave right away. Well, Jim, 
By the time you come back, I'll probably have struck it rich and started my business in Quebec, you know. Oh, but uh, they speak mostly French in Quebec, Herman. Do you know anything about French? Oh, yeah. I eat their toast all the time. <laughs> well, I, I guess you two can get along without me. Well, see you, folks. <laughs> Jim, how soon do they mean by right away? Tonight. Oh, Rosemary, will you go with me as my wife? Oh, Jim, see that little cabin up there near the big pines? Mm-hmm. It, it's my castle. Go there, wait, and I will come to you. All right. You'll see a light in the window. And if anything happens to make you change your mind, let me know by singing the Indian love call. And if I hear that coming up from the valley, it'll be my signal that you're not coming. And I'll put out the light and go on alone. But, Jim, my mind is made up already. I go with you. You go to castle now, and I pack and follow you in 20 minutes so no one sees together. I'll be waiting. No, while you climb up to my cabin, sing me the song that says how you cannot forget me and will choose me for your queen. All right, my darling. See you in 20 minutes. Oh, Rosemary, I love you. I'm always Rosemary, where have you been? Your brother's looking for you. Oh, Monsieur Holly, I've been with my Jim. Tonight I go away with him, and not you nor Emile will stop me. Jim is waiting for me now at my castle. At your castle, huh? Oui. Sergeant Malone would like to know that. He's looking for Kenyon. Oh, the sergeant look for Jim? Why? They want him for the murder of Black Eagle. Murder? Oh, no. Jim would not kill. They found his maps in Black Eagle's cabin, and Black Eagle's wife, Wanda, swears Jim did it. Uh, no. There must be a mistake. <laughs> There's no mistake. Of course, I wouldn't have to tell the sergeant I know where Kenyon is. Oh, nice, Monsieur Orley. Kenyon will have time to cross the border before they find him, if I don't say anything. Of course, you must promise to come to Quebec and marry me. Oh, but Jim need me now. It's the only way you can save him. Oh, no, no. Here comes Malone in the Mounties now. <laughs> Any of you folks know where Jim Kenyon is? I haven't seen him. Rosemary? Uh, no. Uh, Sergeant Malone. Monsieur Orley, please, I have made up my mind. I go to Quebec, like you asked. What were you going to say, Harley? Why, uh, I was going to suggest you search the lowlands over by the lake. I intend to. We're going to search every cabin within 20 miles of here. Come along, men. On through the hill, like a pack of angry wolves on the trail. We are after you, dead or alive. You made a very sensible decision, my dear. Look, on the light in the castle. Jimmy's there. I must warn him. Warn him? How? He just told me that if he hear Indian love call coming up through the valley, he would put out the light and go away. But you can't sing the love call here with all these people listening. Yes, I can. I know a way. Listen, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> This Monsieur Holly is the man I'm going to marry. When I was a little girl, I always say I will sing Indian love song to man I marry. I sing it to him now. When I'm calling you you will answer to Light went out. He's gone. Oh, my Jim is dead. You belong to me. I belong
Between the acts a few minutes ago, we were talking about the average freight train on American railroads and what it does. Railroad freight trains don't produce all the intercity commercial freight transportation service by any means, although they do produce almost twice as much as all other forms of commercial transportation combined. Transportation by lake shipping and by river and canal boats, by motor vehicle, by airplane, and by pipeline, each of these sorts of transportation has its special usefulness. But no one of them, nor all of them together, could take the place of the railroad freight train, which is able to carry not only the things which America needs and uses, but also the fuel, the machinery, the materials necessary for the creation and the maintenance and operation of the other forms of transportation as well. So the next time you watch a freight train pass, look with a seeing eye, because this string of rolling freight cars is the fundamental transportation of the continent, the transportation which makes all else possible. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. And now the third act of Rosemary, starring Patrice Monsell, Pinky Lee, and your host, Gordon McRae. Ah, good morning, Herman. Has Rosemary arrived? No, Mr. Hawley, but her wedding gown is ready for her. So Rosemary is getting married. What do you know? Well, we all have to go sometime. I'll never get over how surprised I was to find hard-boiled Herman running a dress shop in Quebec. I don't understand it either. You know, if you've seen the ghastly way I embroidered when I started here. Hello, Edward. Am I late, Herman? Good morning, my dear. Oh, you're just in time, Rosemary. You know, your wedding gown is ready for you. It's right here, there. This is the only wedding gown in the world with a removable bustle in case you change your mind and want to back out. <laughs> You will also note, you will also note that my dresses are all southern style. Show enough. <laughs> Aren't you delighted with it, Rosemary? Rosemary. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something else. Jim Kenyon, I'll bet. I haven't told you this before, Rosemary, because I didn't want to hurt you. But Jim Kenyon and Black Eagle didn't quarrel over a mining claim that night. They were quarreling over Black Eagle's wife, Wanda. Oh, but that cannot be true. Everyone knew it, but they wouldn't tell you. No one likes to see a sweet young girl made a fool of. Uh, excuse me, where's the manager of this shop? Right here, sir. Shall I show you something expensive, or is it for your wife? <laughs> now, if you would like to... I, de, 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 Jim Kenyon! Oh, Jim! Well, Kenyon, you'll pardon me if I'm amazed at your presence in Canada. I came back to clear my name. You see, I found Wanda and brought her back with me. Wanda is here? Oh, that should not be a surprise, Edward, after what you just told me. What do you mean? When you went back to Black Eagle's cabin that night, did you see Wanda alone? Oh, yes, she was alone. But you see, why... Oh, why bother to explain what is so obvious? Au revoir, Jim. You're making a mistake, Rosemary. No, Jim, you make the mistake, trying to make a fool of me. Now, please, goodbye. Very well. If that's the way it's to be, Goodbye. You did the right thing, my dear. I'll never think of him again, ever. Good. I'll make our wedding plans immediately, and then we'll go to Europe for a long stay. Oh, Rosemary, from now on, your life is going to be happier than you ever dreamed it could be. <laughs> yes, Edward. Childhood days go your way With your laughing games and play Goodbye, girls, with your smile Oh, my God. 
How do you do, Mr. Holly? Wanda. Rosemary, by wedding gown. You plan to make Mary soon, huh? Now, Wanda, don't do anything we'll both be sorry for. Only you'll be sorry, Mr. Holly. You say Wanda go Calgary. When this blow over, I come to you. I don't understand, Edward. What is she talking about? I tell you what I talk about. Man who killed my husband is Edward Holly. She's lying. Sergeant Malone, you come in, no? Well, Holly, what about this? This half-breed is lying. She's fallen in love with Jim Kenyon. She's changed her story to save him. Wanda only lie when she thinks Holly someday marry her. No lie, no. There's no proof. Sergeant Malone, Wanda keep knife, but carefully so fingers don't stay. Wanda trusts no man. Well, Holly, that does it. Better come along. This is an outrage. You can't prove a thing. I demand... Oh, Jim. Jim. I didn't believe you. Wanda... You know where Jimmy is now? No. After I see you, he'll rush to a hotel, then leave. Say never come back again. Herman, you must help me. I've got to find him. Well, may maybe I can help you, huh? I'd do anything, go anywhere you think he might be. Well, I think I learned enough about Jim Kenyon in the five years we were together to make a good guess where he is. And if you were to go back to Kootenai Pass and climb up to a lonely little cabin you used to call your castle... How many times have you stood there by this rock and sung the old Indian call? When I'm calling you Rosemary. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrice Munsell and Pinky Lee will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is your host, Gordon McRae, giving a big vote of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Barry Kroger, Betty Lou Gerson, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Eddie Fields, for their fine performances in Rosemary, which was adapted for radio by Bill Demling. And now, here's Patrice and Pinky. Thank you, everyone. I mean, thank you, everyone. <laughs> I enjoy doing these operettas so much. I hope the Association of American Railroads will invite me back to do another one very soon. Same here. When will you be in the neighborhood again, Pat? <laughs> oh, about the middle of April, when the Met opens in Los Angeles. Well, that's wonderful. Let's plan another one then, shall we? Mm -hmm. And uh, how about you, Pinky? Oh, well, uh, I'll be around the same time. Uh, with the Met? Uh, I'm studying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I hope you both keep listening to us every week. You know, next Monday is Valentine's Day, so we're going to do Victor Herbert's opera, Sweethearts, starring Jane Powell and Walter O'Keefe. Oh, I love the music from Sweethearts, and oh, what follows after that? George Gershwin's Lady Be Good, Pat, starring the great comedian Groucho Marx. For a minute, I thought you were going to say Pinky Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be listening, Gordon. Good night. So long. <laughs> 
All aboard! Well, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Rosemary has been presented by special arrangement with Century Library Incorporated of New York. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. Thank you.